I told you I was working on a sermon <laughs> entitled Trap Doors. And I want to set the foundation for it today. I believe it is very important for a believer to have discernment. Not only when it comes to people, but also when it comes to opportunities. The devil is subtle. He's not going to come at you and I looking like the devil. We need God and we need discernment. I want to start this morning by using an axiom that I think is often overlooked. The more gifted you are, the more options you will have. And the more options you have, the more discernment you will need. I'm going to say that again. The more gifted you are, the more options you will have. And the more options you have, the more discernment you're going to need. I observed this from the beginning in the Bible with Adam and Eve. They were influenced by the enemy who showed up in the form of a serpent. I think this incident exposes us to this truth. When the enemy cannot destroy our life by getting us to mismanage our ethics, the enemy will attempt to destroy our life by influencing us to mismanage our options. In other words, when the enemy cannot destroy us with dysfunction, he will attempt to destroy us with distraction. Are you hearing me, family? Because you, and, you have to understand, he's been around a long time. He had a long time to figure out and use different ways. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And he knows how to trick us big time. You think these illusionists and these magic people who you think freaking you out, you think they good? Huh? This man called Satan? <laughs> Way better than them. And when you think you can handle him without God, you have already been deceived. Are you hearing me, family? We need help. And that help is in the form of G-O-D. Amen? Amen? And he will give us the discernment we need to avoid certain things. Family, it is possible that a diabolical distraction can walk right into our life looking like an amazing opportunity. Are you hearing me? Amazing opportunity. This is why we need God. Because we can no longer walk into seasons in our lives just to make good moves. We have to be able to see and sense when we walk into new seasons because we now need to make God moves. Are you hearing me, family? Am I talking to anyone this morning who have had enough? They have experience, but they've had enough of irritation, agitation, adversity. And you're at the point where your testimony now is if God isn't in it, I don't want it. Are you hearing me? God got to be in it. Because that is the only way it's going to be right for you and for me. You constantly hear me say, is there another way? And the answer is, yes, there is another way. But the best way for you and I, is God's 
way. If God ain't in it, I don't want it. If God ain't in it, then I print on it. Return to sender. Amen. <laughs> Amen? I don't want it. If this opportunity ain't come from God, return to sender. You get to a place in your life where you don't ask the question, who are you? You now ask the question, who sent you? You all hear me? It's a serious thing. Because the enemy and God have plans for your life. You have to know and discern which is the difference. Are you hearing me, family? God is seeking and coming after you, but so is the enemy. So is the enemy. I don't just want a good doll. I want a God doll. If it is a God doll, once you get on the other side, it will be a great doll. A doll that confuses even the enemy. It will be a mind-blowing doll. A barrier-breaking doll. That is why Sometimes when you see great to you and I, it may seem like a great opportunity. But when you walk through the door, it's such a struggle to get things accomplished. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> then you have to step back and say, maybe this wasn't a God door. Because a God door ain't going to put that kind of pressure on you. And if the pressure comes, then he will give you what you need to endure and get through it. Amen? This is why we need to trust God. I know God is going to come through for me. I know the importance of praising God and thanking Him regardless to what may be going on with me. Because God, regardless to what is going on, is still good. Has always been good. And I believe He will be good. And that is why I'm not waiting to walk through a door and see that God opened that door for me and it's good. I starting to praise God in the hallway. I ain't even waiting until I get to the door. <laughs> Amen? I can praise Him now because I know my God is able. Family, we need God doors discernment. Because, and I want you to listen carefully, if the door that you're walking through is not a God door, then that door for me and for you, no matter how good it looks, it is a trap door. Now let me explain this. A trap door is destruction disguised as an opportunity. Are you all hearing me? Anybody walk through a door and after they walk through it, they know they made a wrong step? <laughs> huh? <laughs> it is an opportunity that is appealing initially, but destructive eventually. It looks like a come up, but is actually a setup for a setback. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many times you thought this was a good thing and rather than making five steps forward, you make 15 steps back? <laughs> Maybe it's only me. <laughs> Been there, done that. I got the t-shirt. <laughs> Amen? It's a setup for a setback. I don't know about you, but I've had enough of setbacks. And if I really want to be honest, most of the time, my setbacks were caused by me. In fact, I am so sick of setbacks. I am declaring today, setback season is over. Amen. Setback season is over. 
Life is short, family. <laughs> and we need to position ourselves and get ourselves to the place where we can actually enjoy every day. Because every day is a blessing. Amen. And no man is promised tomorrow. tomorrow. This is why it is so important for us to put so many principles of God into practice in our lives. Because there are people who will do things to us and take away our day. Because we so stress out worrying about what they do to us. We wouldn't put, put into practice the princi principle that allows us to release them so we can enjoy our day. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We got to get back control of our day so we can enjoy it. I believe God is getting ready to come through for me. I don't just want a good dog. I want a God dog. But there is a challenge. And here's the challenge. See, on the outside, good doors and God doors look the same. <laughs> Are you hearing me? I think that's why I picked the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> it don't say God dog, bad dog. <laughs> they just look alike. Amen? This is why we need to trust God when we make decisions to move forward. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and what? All, All things will be added to you. Good doors and God doors, they look alike on the outside. You walk up to a red door, beautiful red doors, two red doors. Now red could be stop, like the stop sign. Red flag. Danger. <laughs> Danger, there you go, beware. <laughs> but the red door could also mean you're covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen? And walk through because you're covered. We know how the angel, they say put red over your doorpost and what? The enemy pass over you. But, but you got to know which one is which. Amen? This is why we need door discernment. Because when we have discernment, we make decisions regarding doors with God in mind. He is leading us by His Spirit with discernment. But when we don't have discernment, then we have to experiment. We won't know if it's a good door until we what? Walk through it. And a lot of times, when we experiment, we walk through trap doors. By walking through it, we actually experiment. Here's the problem. When a door is a trap door, it's very easy to get in, but hard to get out. I could get in in a second, but be stuck for a season. <laughs> Amen? Amen? It's a serious thing. Because when you and I experiment, experiments are expensive. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they cost a lot. I know you've heard the saying, experience is the best teacher. That's cultural. That ain't kingdom. Hear me again, family. We like to jump on these cliches. Experience is the best teacher. That is a worldly, cultural thing. That is not kingdom. Culture says that. God don't say that. Experience for some people may be the most effective teacher. But it is not God's preferred teacher. God does not want us to learn fire is hot by us sticking our hand in the fire. He wants us to trust his word when he says, don't touch the fire. And without touching it, you just believe him and save yourself from getting burned. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. That is what he wants. He wants us to trust his word enough on the front end 
that we don't have to learn everything by getting burned on the back end. Experimentation is expensive. Remember, I preached a sermon, ignorance is expensive. You all remember that sermon? <laughs> ignorance will cost you. So what does experimentation cost if, you don't, if you're not walking in discernment? Well, the first thing that it will cost is your time. Mm. One of these days I'm going to preach a sermon on time. Because if we really saw time the way God sees time, we would handle our time completely differently. <clears throat> if we saw time as a non-renewable asset, you know about that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning you ain't going to get it back, and that's what I mean? <laughs> Let's not talk about stuff. <laughs> you will never be able to get it back. Once you lose a day, you don't get it back. Yeah. This is why forgiveness is so important. Because when a person hurts you, they took something from you they could never give back to you. Even if they give you an apology. You can give me an apology. But don't you know all the days and nights my heart was broken. I grieved. You have no idea the time I spent trying to fix what you broke. So you can give me a sorry, but you can't give me all those days back. I need a reader. Turn to Psalms chapter 90 and read verse 12. The psalmist is saying something here. What does he say? Psalms 90, verse 12. Anybody got it? Yes, Ken. So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Teach us to count our days. That we may gain a what? Wise heart. Wise heart. Lord, help us to see that our days are numbered. And every time the sun sets and rises, that is a day that's coming off our total amount. <laughs> Amen? Are you all hearing me? How many times we sit down and think about that? We have an allotted time, an allotted amount of days, and everyone is less. You know when we see that important? Mm. On our bank account. <laughs> or lack <like> thereof. <laughs> <laughs> because every time we take off that number, that's it. <laughs> that's gone. You can't put it back. <laughs> well, I had a hundred thousand. And every time you write that check, and now you look, you got 75. But it matters what you do with the money that you're taking off, and you try to be so cautious with it, because it matters. And it's taking off the amount you have. Are you all hearing me? Our days are numbered. And every day takes away one more day from that number. Count your days. And we need to stop allowing people and things to take away our days because we consume ourselves with what they or it may have done. Am I making any sense? There are ways to handle those things because life can happen to everybody. But we need to know how to move through so we still could enjoy the blessing of that day. How is that? Harder than, it's harder to do than <laughs> yes. say. Well, it's a process. But I'm here to tell you, it can be done. And he wants us to know that it can be done. And we need to work towards that. Because that is his preferred place for us. Do you all understand what I'm saying? I call it God's best for us. 
When we understand every day is numbered, it changes the way we spend that day. It changes the way you release time. It changes our willingness to be influenced by people who want to take something from us that don't belong to them. We need to start saying, this is my day. And I can do what I need to do to enjoy this day. This is my day. And I'm not going to let you take it from me. Are you all hearing me, family? So when I'm experimenting, I'm wasting time. I'm not getting back. We need God to give us discernment. I look back over my life and I can think of people who I knew when I was in my 20s. And they were a lot older than me. But they spent a lot of time trying to recover from decisions that they made when they were in their 20s. So instead of spending their 30s and 40s and 50s thriving and enjoying God's goodness, they spent their 30s, 40s, and 50s trying to recover from bad decisions. <laughs> Amen? Amen? When we don't trust God, seek after God, and do our own thing, we tend to make bad decisions that affect our lives, our futures, our families. And a lot of times because of ignorance, when, when we decide to change our minds later on in life because of life experiences and we get to a different place and now we're ready to humble ourselves and admit that we need God, we spend a lot of time in recovery. Are you all hearing me? God wants to say, I try to stop you from getting there. I want you to thrive now. But in order to thrive now, you got to trust me. I know things that you don't know. But trust that I know them. Sound like a parent, hey. Try to get your child to listen to what you got to say. Because you know. They don't know. And all you can do is sit back and pray for them. Amen? Amen. We don't want to be in recovery. I pray over this house today, CCC, and all those under the sound of my voice, that if you need a recovery, that God will give you one swiftly. So that this next season of your life is not spent in recovery, but you could spend it thriving. Amen? Amen. It's not recovery time, family. It's time to thrive. And I want you to know that the God we serve, He is able to give you recovery and thriving in the same season. Amen? Amen. If you will only trust Him. So yes, experimenting without discernment is expensive and it costs time. What else does it cost, Pastor? Well, it not only costs time, but it costs treasure, resources. <laughs> there were times when we put assets into people and things that turned out to be liabilities. Mm -hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Just something to think about. I mean, we're all in the same boat. We're all human beings. We all experience the same things. We don't like to talk about it. But we go through stuff. We make bad decisions. We help people who turn around and stick it to us. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit is speaking to all of us now. <laughs> Amen? Just think. And don't throw no tomatoes at me. Don't throw no rocks at me. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Just think how we would be sitting if we had all of our dumb money back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Could be a bad thing. <laughs> I call it dumb money. <laughs> Amen? 
all the money we put into dumb people and stuff. <laughs> Let that sink in. <laughs> huh? Woo! Lord help us. <laughs> Some of us are looking at stuff right now and saying, why in the world did I... <laughs> huh? I don't even like that. <laughs> there you go. I don't even like them. <laughs> hey, right. <laughs> Why? Exactly. I'm going to remind you of that next week. There it is. So experimentation costs time and it costs resources. Another thing it does, it creates trauma. Sometimes you meet some interesting people on the other side of what looks like good doors. Many times when we talk about trauma, it's attached to what people do to us. And that could be dramatic. But sometimes it can be who people are to us. That's equally dramatic. Because some people can switch up on you so drastically, it's traumatizing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hmm. Some people switch up is so drastic, you can't even explain it. It's confusing. <clears throat> and it could get you all messed up. It can make you start, judging, start questioning your judgment questioning your decision making, even questioning your discernment. How could I have possibly missed that? <laughs> You'd be like, how can you be nice on this end and then be so shysty and deceitful on this end? It's traumatizing. You went from here to there. Now you got me all messed up. I'm looking at everybody cross-eyed now. I, I don't trust nobody. Even the dog. That's how, that's how much somebody can hurt you. Get you confused. Family, I don't know what season you are in your life right now. But there is a season of life where the responsibility you carry is so significant. And what God wants to do in that season is so critical and pivotal that you cannot afford to waste time. You can no longer afford to waste resources. And you definitely cannot afford to subject yourself to unnecessary trauma. Are you hearing me, family? We need <coughs> discernment. We need God. I've had enough already. <coughs> Life itself is enough. I don't need these extra things. I don't need no additional trauma in this season in my life. I'm trying to work through the trauma I caused myself. I don't need the trauma you can bring. Amen? Amen? And you know something? You know who is responsible for your well-being? Yourself. <coughs> the world and the enemy will make you think that when you are adamant and you make a stand and refuse to allow yourself to be treated a certain way because you're taking care of you you know where you need to be. We need to take a stand. And don't make no one think that there's something wrong with you because you won't let them destroy you. <coughs> Are you hearing me, family? Because ain't nobody can fix you 
like you can fix you. Nobody really know what you're dealing with but you. So you need to take the steps that you need to take for you. God first. And vet everything through him. His word. Let him guide you. And then you start putting the others in place. Amen? Amen. And sometimes you have to do some things that's going to be hard for them. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it'll take you out of that bed. It'll take you out of that depression. It'll cause you to lift your head and enjoy the blessing of the day. Amen? Amen. Amen. We need door discernment. We need God's Holy Spirit to give us that discernment. There's a passage of scripture in Acts chapter 16 that I will be using as a case study to help articulate what I am trying to to convey. In Acts chapter 16, there's a story about a missionary called Paul who's going to different places, teaching, preaching, training disciples, and raising up spiritual leaders and planting churches. So he's going from place to place, him and his companions are traveling through the region. And this is what the Bible says. Let's turn again. Acts chapter 16. I'm reading, I'm going to read two verses, 6 to 8. Acts chapter 16. Because that's what I was talking about, that little foundation I was giving to you, I'm going to show you how this is biblically. <laughs> that every door ain't a God door. And we need the Holy Spirit to divert us from going through doors in that even when we think is a good door. Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area, Pergia and Galatia, because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Then coming to the borders of Mesa, they headed north for the province of Bathnia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went on through Maesia, Maesia to the seaport of Troas. Now, I want you to read the whole chapter of 16. But you'll find that Paul was excited about working for God and doing stuff. And he decided that he wanted to go into a certain area and continue to do what he was doing. But when he tried to get into that area, the Bible says the Holy Spirit prevented them from preaching the word there. So he tried to go around and enter the same area from a different direction. And again the Bible says, they were not allowed to go there. And that's what your Bible says? They were stopped again. Stopped by the Holy Spirit. Because even though it may seem that he was doing a good thing, it may seem that he wanted to go and do a good thing, all doors ain't God doors. <laughs> and we can talk about that a little bit more. We need discernment. We need to have such a relationship that with God that when He convicts us, and you feel that little prompting that says, ah, don't do that, then we need to listen. Our relationship is so good with God that we know that's the Holy Spirit given us this amendment. And then we are obedient. Amen. Are you all hearing me? Because if we hear that still small voice, it will stop us from walking and getting into a lot of problems in our lives. 
we all can look back right now and think of situations where we weren't listening to that little small voice. Mm -hmm. We saw something that looked like a good thing. Mm -hmm. And you gotta understand, it ain't gonna look like a bad thing, because even if it looked like a bad thing for you, you ain't gonna do it. It's the good looking things that you can do. Someone once said, just because you're able to do it, doesn't necessarily mean that you do it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And we need discernment in this season of our lives. Amen? So I'm going to stop here at this time. Give you all some time to get with your families. I hope they do something special for you. I hope that something that I've said this morning and setting the foundation for this, this message, you can take and hear. Amen? Amen. We are all people. We all deal with the same things we don't always talk about. But God wants us to know that He's here. He's reminding us of who He wants us to be and, who, and what He doesn't want us to do and what is best for us as far as He is concerned. Are you all hearing me? Yes, you can do what you want to do. But His preferred best for us is in this word. Amen? Put your hands together and let's give God some praise. Once again, I want to say Happy Mother's Day. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I will be praying for you. Amen?